Okay, again, I, I give no medical advice whatsoever. I keep saying that over and over because I'm afraid of getting bumped. Now, this is, just came out a while ago about identical twins grew up with autism but took very different paths. Apparently, when they were very young, they had a similar, they were, they were identical twins, and they had a similar look to them like they weren't, they, they were sort of struggling. And um, one of them, though, had surgery. Now, I'm just going to read this to you. The Science of Siblings is a new series exploring the ways our siblings can influence us. From our money and our mental health all the way down to our very molecules. We'll be sharing these stories over the next several weeks. Sam and John Fetters, 19, identical twins, opposite ends of the autism spectrum. Now they're saying they both had autism, so let's just listen. Sam is a sophomore at Amherst College, plans to double major in history and political science. In his free time, he runs marathons. Now, John attends a special school, struggles to form sentences, likes to watch Teletubbies and Sesame Street. He's on the lower end of the spectrum, you know, where he's struggling. Now, the two brothers, Sam, with the same genes different flavors of autism. Now, they're going to get into some details that are very important to understand. To scientists, twins like Sam and John pose an important question. How can a disorder that is known to be highly genetic, this is what they think, it's highly genetic, look so different in siblings who share the same genome? Genetics are a series of programs. They send out signals to do something you have to have the bacteria and the enzymes to complete the command. Otherwise, what would happen, it just doesn't happen. And your body doesn't have the stuff that it needs to produce the, the products to make it healthy. So having a genetic code, that's fine. And I could say, you know, they can have problems with genetics. I'm not saying it's not true. I'm just saying it's not every single time. And that's how it's been looked at, it's highly genetic. Now, so how come they both got the same genes, one doesn't get it, one gets it, really bad. There is one of the, this is one of the greatest mysteries right now in research on autism. This is one of the greatest mysteries. Let's see if we can work together to solve this. This is Dr. Stephanie Morris, a pediatrician neurologist at Kennedy Krieger Institute in Baltimore. She's saying this is, the most mysterious thing that got going. Now, solving that mystery could help explain autism's odd mix of nature and nurture. Nature and nurture. Remember this. Morris says it also might help modify the trajectory of autism children experiencing speech and language delays or difficulty with social communications. If you can re reduce all of these different symptoms and bring the child back to having a, a sort of a normal interaction with society, that is such an enormous change on an entire family and neighborhood, basically. The, 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 autism is a, a devastating to the person that has it, but everybody surrounding them is, is affected as well. It's a very, very difficult place to be, and there's so many in it now. One in 36 in the United States, one in 20 over there in Northern Ireland. And it, it could be something to do with the water, the environment, the food, the way they live life, the air. I mean, it could be literally anything. But it's going to all come back down to the fact that something is not right with the enzymes in the body or the, the bacteria, well, it's a bacteria because the bacteria create the enzymes. So let's just get to the bacteria. We swab it, we check it, we see what's going on. That's what research is all about. And this is the identical twins. Now let's continue on with them because one of them had surgery and a ton of antibiotics very early in life and that's the one that's got the issues. Okay, I, I'm not going to go through the whole article with you. But if you want to read it, it's a very good article. It's about 
identical twins, both grew up with autism, but took very different paths. One of them had a very mild case of autism, and they claimed it was autism. He just, he, and he took right off and he was fine. But his brother just never started. He just, and they worked with him really hard. They sent him to special schools, to special training, and everything else, and it didn't help. And they were identical twins, same genetics. One of them was fine, basically. He's going through, a, he's taken two majors in college at Amherst College. The other one is just talking about Sesame Street and just barely can form words and so forth. Has a hard time putting things together. And um, they say in the beginning, they, they both had repetitive movements, they didn't do much. Now, was that a product of anything that could have happened during the birthing process or of like um, um, antibiotics or something like that? That's something to think about because you, you have to have the probiotics in your body, these bacteria that you get as the birthing process happens. And that starts to create your, your um, immunities based on what you're exposed to. Now, at the age of two, neither was speaking, and they were enrolled them in special schools and so forth. And then Sam took off and he was fine, but the other one, John, just didn't make it. He, he was just never got better. And they're looking for answers, and they thought it might be good to see if they could find some answers. So they went and they had them both examined and all this stuff. And this goes back to the earliest twin studies helped debunk the theory that autism was caused by parenting. So let's forget about the parenting causing it. Because they, they were very, they did everything they could, it sounds like to me. It sounds like they did more than they most would be willing to do. Now, under this theory, moms took the brunt, and they, they always blamed the mother. They were cold, they distant, the kids just didn't have any attention, so they, that's why they're so upset, and they just go shake in the corner. No, that's proven not to be the case. Now, they did studies of 366 identical twins and they had 90 percent chance if one twin had it the other twin had it now twin deliveries are a little more complicated than a normal delivery and i they had been using intravenous antibiotics which is not going to work well for that kid getting good bacteria in his body because it's going to be killed by the antibiotics. I would think something to, to look at. Get a fecal swab right after they get out and start pooping and see what's in there. Is there any bacteria? Is, is, is the normal set of bacteria in that child when it was originally born? Because that's your immune system. That builds, those are the things that break down your food. They do all that stuff. And a child has no digestive system. When they're born, they have no digestive, digestive system, nothing to speak of. I mean, all the plumbing is there, but they, there's no digesters. There's no bacteria. All right, this is the most important thing to understand. When a baby is born, the digestive system of a newborn, unlike the adult body, the fetal digestive system, fetal, a baby, just being born, does not have a digestive function from birth. It can't break anything down. The stomach and the intestines are reduced in size while the liver with its hemophytic functions is proportionally much more developed. This does not have a digestive system from birth, the newborn. Immediately though, coming through the birth canal and in the feces and all that stuff which co coats the baby basically during the birth process, they program the local bacteria. Now can you see this up here? Hold on. By the way, these are the different absorptive devices that are in the body, all these different types of tissues that line your digestive system. Now, and you get all the way down to the colon, and they think the colon is just where the poop collects. Well, the colon might not be very important in the digestive process. It is, however, important in the production of vitamins thanks to its large amount of bacterial flora large amount of bacterial flora and to its reabsorption of fluids. So you need all of these layers to be working correctly and then you need to have all the bacteria 
in them to do their job. And if they do, they will protect their environment, first of all, so that nothing invades them and the, where they live, and then they will create the products that you, they're supposed to be there to do. It's as simple as that. It's not a big, major, hard thing to understand. You have to have the bacteria to make the enzymes. The enzymes work millions of times, up to billions of times faster than without them. Without them, you're just done. It can't happen. You're not going to have any digestion. Zero. It can't happen. So, we have to start off by saying, what does this kid have in their poop? Because the poop is where all this is, is, is moving through. That's what it's all about. What's coming out of the poop? When it's coming out with the right bacteria, it means it's doing the right job and getting ready to start digesting food. It, originally, it's supposed to come from the mother's mammary glands, which is, uh, and otherwise than that, they sell commercial formula. But it has to be a special thing. It can't be just anything because they can't break it down. It has to be a certain type of fluid that they can absorb without having the right digestion because they've they got to build that digestion. And when they don't have those chemicals going on, they're just not making the enzymes. They don't make the enzymes. The nerves that are starting to take over and grow and function and attach to their arms, you know, they, they don't just go flopping like this. They don't, they don't work. They don't create those, those neural pathway. Really, it's a myelin sheathing, really, I believe. That's what I believe right now. It's the coating, because every different type of nerve in your body has a, a, a coating around it to insulate it and keep it protected and to facilitate the synapses where the, the nerves, that's what they say, they pulsate through these synapses. I don't know if that's true or not anymore. The, I, I want to see everything again, start from the beginning again, and see where these assumptions correct. Because I found a lot of them aren't correct. So, anyway, that's my discussion about the fetal does not have a digestive function from birth. It's created by the bacteria locally. If you don't have the bacteria, you're not going to be able to fight off any of the invasive things and they're included by things that come into you from the environment or things that are injected into you for, you know, things to try to protect you because they create a little bit of invasion and if you have anything to fight back that a little bit of invasion can become serious that's all I have to say about that but I would like to talk to Kennedy about these things I, you know I have a little information about this and I have some good sources of technical information this is as good as anything you know I don't have a a doctor or name or any of that stuff but I, I've studied the human body very, very deeply.